Today we're going to do an in the field review of the Shimoda Designs Action V2 50 liter bag. So I came out here this evening to Cedar Falls, frequently visit this spot, and it's late summer, so I'm really not expecting there to be a whole lot of water, but it's always fun to get out here. I usually see this place in the early morning, I'm gonna see it in the late afternoon, early evening now, and that's always sort of cool to see different light and see what's going on. But I've got a longer hike planned tomorrow uh, with the same bag, the Action version two, 50 liter. And uh, I just sort of want to scout things out. I'm guessing water flow is going to be super low and that's cool. That means I'm just going to have to look for, you know, rays of light. We got some coming in right up through here, through the trees. So that's probably what I end up looking for tonight. Small scenes and interesting plays of light. But I did want to talk a little bit about the Shimoda Designs Action V2 50 liter bag. Uh, I've had the chance to carry it now through, uh, three, four day trip in West Virginia, a couple of day trips. And uh, so still early in my usage of it, but I do have some early thoughts on it. And I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about it. So I talked about this bag in the unboxing video, which I'll link to in the description down below and probably up there as well. But this is again the Shimoda Designs Action V2 50 liter bag. So I previously carried the Shimoda Designs Explorer V2 35 liter bag and I went up in size. And a lot of that is because I carry a lot of video equipment and then in the wintertime I like to have a spot to, to stuff extra clothes and this little flex spot up here on top is sort of pretty cool for that. We'll take a quick look at that in a little bit. Like I said, I've carried this now through West Virginia, several day trip to West Virginia, up and down cliffs, all around, had the video gear, camera gear, all of that with me. And then I've had a couple day trips here. And then this particular weekend, I'm out here this evening, just sort of scouting something out. I got a longer hike planned tomorrow and we'll see how things go. But I just sort of want to do hit on some of the things I'm really liking about this bag, some of the things they carried over from the uh, Explorer V2 series, as well as talk about a couple things that I wish they'd have also brought over to this bag that I sort of miss. Okay, so first let's just talk a little bit about the bag in general. Again, this has the same quality design as Shimoda Designs bags. Uh, I'm super happy with my Explorer version two, and this bag looks like it's gonna handle this everything the same way. Super rugged, super durable, uh, easy to carry, lots of strap adjustments. Let's just take a look at a couple of the big features, like right off the bat. Uh, like I said, it's got the pockets, got my water bottle in here now. Uh, super easy, handy to carry, love the water bottle pocket. Also fits a disposable water bottle if you forget your normal one. But again, this is a Nalgene 16 ounce bottle, fits in there perfectly. Perfect. Got another little pocket over here. I tend to keep either a little flashlight or a knife in there, something like that, just to keep that around. So super cool, lots of adjustment points. Uh, I mentioned one of the reasons I wanted the action bag was to have the flex space on top. So what it's got is it's got this flex space on top. Undo this and it unwinds to provide up to another seven liters of space in it right up in there like, like that. So in the wintertime or when you have a lot more layers of clothing. Today it's summer, so I don't really need a bunch of space, so I can sort of shrink the bag down, which is super cool. In the wintertime, if I'm carrying some extra gear, uh, maybe extra socks or a down jacket or anything like that, it gives me a great place to sort of stuff that in there. Again, it's a roll top, so you can just roll it up. So like I said, I think that flex space is super useful to be versatile. So it's like I said, right here in the summertime, I don't need a whole lot with me. Shorts, t-shirt, uh, I'm good to go. Not a lot of extra clothing. Wintertime, the bag can expand to handle that. Or in a longer trip, if I want to bring some extra food, extra snacks or anything like that. Or if I'm leading a workshop where I might bring some extra stuff like a first aid kit and additional supplies because I have workshop participants with me. It gives me that flex space to really sort of work with. So like I said, that is one of the things that drew me to the action series of bags. And also why I lean towards the 50 liter instead of the 35 liter I have is because I I find that I tend to need more stuff with me. And a lot of that's because of the video, because of the workshops, things like that. But it was nice to sort of bump up in size and see that. So the other thing is you've noticed it comes in different colors. I went with the yellow color. I really like it. I call it influencer yellow just because it sort of stands out on camera and stuff like that. So I thought I'd try a little something different. I have the army green version of the Explorer V2 and I guess I'm just not really into black bags 
um, I've had enough of those and just not super into those. So I went with the yellow. Now, one thing I heard people say is that it attracts a lot of bugs. And like I said, I've been out, I don't know, I've probably got about six, seven days worth of carrying this out into the field. And I've not really had any bug problem with it. People were saying the yellow attracted bugs and flies and stuff. I haven't seen that. So it's been super cool. Uh, I've enjoyed the color. It makes my bag super easy to find um, amongst others. As I mentioned in my first video, I've recommended Shimoto bags to so many people. I'm starting to travel with lots of people with the same bag. So now I've got the different color stands out. Uh, so I sort of like it. So I thought the interesting color, the color was sort of interesting. So like I said, yellow is sort of cool. Okay, I stopped here real quick because the light was coming through the trees, filtering through. I was trying for the sun star, but it's not quite. There's just a little too much obstruction to get the sun star out of there, but I thought I'd give it a whirl. I am going to switch real quick. I'm using a 14 to 30 on here. I'm going to switch over to 24, 120, so I can just sort of zoom in a little more and maybe try to get these backlit trees in there and see how it looks. <laughs> So yeah, I swapped onto the 24-120 real quick to sort of capture this this shot. Now, of course, like anytime light moves way faster than you expect, photographers know that because we're always trying to chase the light and we realize how quickly it moves. And so I think I probably missed my shot. I'm losing some of the backlight here, but it, that happens. You, you miss it sometimes. So I'm going to pack this stuff up and uh, let's move on down the trails a little bit. I do want to see Cedar Falls before it gets dark and uh, we'll talk just a little bit more about this bag. So as you saw there, one of the features I really like about the, the Shimoto bags is it has two side pockets and they can either be for tripods, which for me as a videographer, YouTuber is handy because I have my still camera tripod and my video tripod. So it's super easy to carry both tripods, really like that. Or if you're not carrying around two tripods, um, makes for a great larger water bottle. So if you're on a longer trip, you can put one of the larger Nalgene bottles in there, makes it super easy. And of course on the Action V2, these pockets are removable. Those pockets can be removed and put on the hip belt and make things super easy. So maybe you're doing a lot of lens changes and you want to keep that lens super close, not have to take the bag back and forth off and on, and the, the side pocket is removable, so you can put them on that hip belt to do that. Or if you want your water, your bigger water bottle super close, you can put it right there. So again, one of the reasons I like the Shimoto bags is those side pockets. It was one of the one of the reasons that drew me to my short list when I chose my Explorer V2 was pockets. I know that sounds a little weird, but it's important to me. And as expected, the waterfall is not flowing very well at all. It's really just a trickle. Uh, anyone that's followed my channel see me at this location many a time, and usually the water is coming down nice and good. I mean, it's not always a crazy roaring waterfall, but it is the highest flow waterfall in the park, which pretty much tells me my hike tomorrow, waterfalls will not be the emphasis. And what that's gonna do for me, and the reason I sort of wanted to see this, is to know when I go in tomorrow's hike, am I looking more for small scenes and focusing on things like that? or do I have some hope that the waterfalls will be running? Well, based on this, the waterfalls are gonna be a trickle. So when I'm out hiking tomorrow, I'm gonna to be focusing on small scenes, those small details and being conscious to be very observant of those because that's probably where my photograph opportunities will come from. So great successful trip, you know, this is why I came out, just to get a feel for what tomorrow's hike will look like. So with that, let's find a spot to settle up. Uh, let's talk about one of the things I miss on this bag that my Explorer V2 has. And I do want to talk a little bit about the large camera cube insert. I've been back and forth on that. I want to touch on that just a little bit and uh, see what else we can think, talk about this bag, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, like I said, I've talked pretty favorably about this bag. I am sure it is going to serve me great, but after having used it in the field, let's talk about the one thing that sort of I miss from my Explorer V2 bag. And it probably seems sort of silly, but on the Explorer V2, there's a pocket right here, just a small little pocket. And I always found it handy to put like my moleskin notebook in there, or if I'm using maps, if I've got paper maps, I'd always slide them in there. But it's just a very nice, easily accessible pocket to just sort of slide stuff in and get it out 
if I needed a quick reference to it. It wasn't a huge pocket, but like I said, it could fit a notebook in there, maybe even two notebooks, and I really like to use it for that. And it is something I miss because I've had to find some place else to put that type of stuff in here somewhere else in the bag. Obviously, there's tons of room for it. It's just it's now more inside the bag than outside the bag. So I do sort of miss that pocket right here, and I sort of wish they'd incorporated into it. Not a make or break feature, still really happy with the bag so far, but that is something I missed from the Explorer version 2. So many of the Explorer version 2 features they did carry over, which are great. You know, all the extra handles, we've talked about that. You know, the side handles, it's got the bottom handle over here. Super nice with that. So, you know, tons of great features came over with it, but I do miss that, that particular pouch. Okay, and one other thing, I talked about this in my unboxing video, but one of the things I did with this bag is I moved from, I used to use, anyone to see my Explorer version 2 videos, again, links in the description, I used the medium ICU, the DSLR ICU, and a small ICU. A lot of times I just carried the medium, and I'd use the top more for flex space for things up there, that was super convenient. However, when I started shooting with the, the Sigma 100-400 more, I could not fit the 100-400 attached to the camera body inside the ICU, because it just won't fit in the medium. So one of the things I did when I picked up the, the Action V2 is I got a large ICU so I can actually fit my camera body and 100-400. Now I don't have it configured for that right now, but what I would do is I could change this attached body and then it would have plenty of room for camera body and 100-400 attached. So while it's been nice to be able to have the option to put the 100-400 attached to the body in the bag, for this trip, when I first packed up, I actually took the large out because one thing I miss with the large ICU in here is that it's harder to get into this flex space up here at the top. I can get in there, I got my drone controller up there, a couple of odds and ends, some, some video mounts and tripod heads and things like that, but it's, it's a harder reach, whereas when it's just the medium, I have easy access to it. So when I packed up for this trip, I actually switched over to the medium ICU started packing up, but then I realized, well, I do sort of like, I'm sort of sloppy still. I still don't have my, my organization in here because I've got things all scattered in here. You know, the camera, uh, my video camera goes up here, the 100 to 400, 14 to 30. I got the 24, 120 on this right now. Um, my filters, drone, mic equipment, mic. So, I mean, there's just so much room to work with in the large that I'm almost disorganized because it hasn't forced me to be organized. But anyways, long way of saying is I mentioned the large ICU in my unboxing video and I'm still trying to decide if I like the large, large ICU or if I prefer the medium and more flex space up here. So we'll see. Obviously for this trip, I did end up putting the large back in because it was handy to have this all here. I think it's a mental shift of trying to make sure everything I want ready access to, quick access to is in here. And I'm only putting stuff up here that's rarely used. I got in a habit with the medium ICU of being able to do both. So to me, it's a big choice to decide ICU. And that's, that's why I wanted to talk about this a little bit. As you're choosing your bag, I'm still not 100% sure which way I would go. I did end up putting the large back in. So maybe I'll end up sticking with that. So I almost put the medium back in. So I'm still on the fence which ICU setup is the best. I'm lucky I've got all three of them so I can play with it and figure it out. But uh, that's just one thing I'm debating and trying to figure out with this bag and probably even the Explorer V2. Okay, so that's it. This is my, like I said, seven plus a day review of this bag. Like I said, I've had it out to West Virginia on a multiple day trip, several day trips around here. Brought it out tonight, be carrying it around again tomorrow. Like I said, if you're looking for this feature by feature blow of this bag, if you're considering it, uh, I did a video in the unboxing piece of this that covers a lot of the features. I highly encourage you, if you're considering this bag and trying to just figure out what features does it bring, check out that video. If you're sort of like pretty sure you want this bag, but just start trying to get information on what it's been like for people carrying it, that's what this video is out. Pretty early in, but I think it's good to get those reviews out there early, talk about it and see how it's going. Great bag, super happy, really happy with the Shimoto Explorer V2 features are pulled into it. I've highlighted some of those. I do miss the little pocket here for my Explorer V2 bag. Not a deal breaker, but it was pretty handy to have. So I sort of wish it had that, but again, not a deal breaker. Like the size, I did go up. Like I said, I carry a lot of video gear. I lead workshops where I have to bring extra gear, maybe extra rain ponchos, extra food, first aid kits. So I did go up. The 40 liter bag might be really good if I wasn't doing the video or the workshops, but you know, trying to figure that out. So sort of pay attention to size, see what you think will work for you. 50 liter seems to be working good for me. I'm sure this bag's probably gonna be pretty much my regular carry from here on out. Uh, I will still use my Explorer V2 uh, when I fly or for trips where it's not my predominant bag. I have a feeling when you use the, the 35 liter for a big outing, multiple week outing, you know, I'll probably try to take this, but I'm still trying to figure out which bag I'm gonna fly with most regularly. I'll definitely be keeping my Explorer V2, even though I think this will be my more regular carry for the moment. Uh, we did talk about the 
the ICUs which size to get. I'm sort of between the large. The large does fit nicely in here. So I may end up using a large in here and using my medium ICU route for the 35 liter uh, Explorer V2. But yeah, that's my uh, that's my early review. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Great bag, certainly purchase again. I love Shimoto design stuff. It's quality. This has every bit of the fit finish quality of the Explorer V2, which I've carried for a long time. So I have no doubt this bag is gonna hold up super well to the, all the abuse it goes through. So super excited about that. So if you have any questions about this bag, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Again, wasn't really trying to cover all the features tonight. This was more just what do I think of it after having it for a while and how it's been carrying and how it's worked out for me. So if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.